Hey guys, it's Kosein here, and in this video we're going to be discussing what parts are in SOLIDWORKS and how to create them. So parts are individual part files, and individual part files are created based on this individual item. So you may need to create these custom items for your robot, and we're going to create these items in SOLIDWORKS. So after you create these items, some applications could be going on and printing them um, using a 3D printer. So by using a 3D printer, you can then create like a physical part um, that can then be used for your robot. So that's basically the context for what we're going to be doing. Um, without further ado, let's go onto the laptop and open up SOLIDWORKS. So I've got my desktop here and I've got SOLIDWORKS already open. So in the last video, we kind of discussed how to create part files. So you go onto the home page and you press this part button and it'll take some time to load. Um, so in the last video, we kind of, uh, we were on this page and as we discussed, we're going to hit front plane and then we're going to hit show and then similarly for top plane and right plane, just show all of them. So now a few things before we get started. Um, if you want to minimize kind of like your part, you can just kind of put it here and then you want to maximize it you can again. And if you want to close your part, you can close your part here. So that's kind of different to closing up the all of SOLIDWORKS. So don't hit this X because that'll close the whole application. If you kind of just want to close this, you can and start a new one, um, that's what you can do. So that's where we left off. Um, the other thing we're going to do is we're going to save our work. So it's always good to set up uh, like a saved file so we can just keep hitting Control S um, as we go along. So we'll hit save and it's kind of up to you how you want to um, run your own organization but I've got like an individual robotics file um, and then I'm going to just leave it in SOLIDWORKS. So you can also create like a new folder within SOLIDWORKS and just put in parts. Uh, because as we discussed Parts are different to assemblies, and they have different files. So as you can see, this is now going to be a SOLIDWORKS part. So I go into part, and we'll just label this um, test. And that is now done. So as you can see, this is now changed, and the star is gone. So as we create more changes, this asterisk is going to pop up, and then we can just hit Control S, and it'll all be saved. Okay, so once we've saved our file, we can now start working in creating parts. So parts are based on an initial sketch. So you can see here, there are a bunch of these little tabs up here. For now, we're just going to be working on the sketch tab. So hit the sketch tab. And for us to sketch, we have to choose a plane to sketch in. So it doesn't really matter which plane you choose. Um, personally, we're just gonna choose the top plane for now. You can choose another plane and you'll see it won't really matter. So we'll hit the top plane. We'll make sure it's selected. You can see over on this side, it's selected here. Or you can see the whole thing kind of just turns light blue and then we'll hit sketch. So now once we've hit sketch, you'll see that we're now in kind of like a different tab up here. And if you hit exit sketch, now we're gonna exit the whole sketch. So don't hit this exit button. We're now gonna create our sketch. So you have a bunch of shapes you can sketch. Um, you can also kind of go freehand if you want to, but it's up to you. We're now we're gonna choose a center rectangle. So hit center rectangle. And now we can start sketching this rectangle. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to choose our plane and we're in the top plane and you can see it's given us a nice like 3D overview of what's going on. And you can choose your point to now sketch on. I'm just going to choose the middle. So if you move toward the middle, you'll see there's a red button and it locks in. Your cursor will lock in on that red button. So for the center rectangle, you just hit the middle button and you start to drag outwards. So let's just say we want to create a square. A square, the side lengths are all the same. And as you can see, it's pretty difficult to make like all of these side lengths equal. You can see X equals 84.45. And if I move the Y kind of closer in, um, it's a little bit difficult to get these exactly the same. So what we'll do is we'll just kind of make something close to a square and we'll make it fairly large um, like that. And now what we'll do, this isn't a perfect square, but we can make it a perfect square later. So now because we've created our sketch, we'll just hit this tick button here but we're still in our sketch. Now to create this a perfect square, all you have to do is you hit one side, and now you can see one side is kind of chosen. Press shift and hit the other side. So make sure it's one side like that. And now once you let go of shift, you have a bunch of options here, which are called relations. So relations kind of just uh, move two different sides and they'll kind of make them different. So these two sides, they're already perpendicular, which means they're at 90 degrees to each other. But what we want to do is we want to make them equal. So once you press equal, you'll now see that this thing actually is a perfect square. So these two sides are now equal to each other. And because these two are equal, this will be equal to that one as well. So now we've created our square, we can now exit the sketch. 
So once we've exited the sketch, we'll see now, now that all we've done is we've created kind of like this new blue kind of um, sketch here. And another thing you'll notice is that there's this another sketch six. So this is your first sketch. Um, it'll say sketch or sketch one. Uh, because this is like the sixth time I'm doing this, it'll say sketch six. So let's say we have our square and we now want to make it a cube. Uh, it's quite simple to make it a cube. We'll just hit this button here and now it'll um, go over or it'll select the square for us. So now what we'll do is we'll hit this button here. So go to features and now choose extruded boss uh, slash base. So once we do that, if you hit that button, you kind of get a preview of what's going on. So you'll notice that this sketch, um, it kind of turned into a rectangular prism. And to make this kind of bigger, uh, like the width of this higher or lower, all you have to do is in this 10 millimeters, just kind of move it forward or backwards. So for us personally, um, I don't really need this to be a perfect cube. So what we'll do is we'll kind of just make it look like a cube. So at 90, it's kind of okay. What I'll do, you can kind of choose your own. The units for us don't really matter as long as it's pretty close. So we'll choose 85 millimeters. So 85 millimeters, and that kind of looks okay. So once you're okay with kind of like the 3D element, we can now press this tick button. So once again, uh, because we're now in this extruded boss or base, once we've extruded the whole shape, if you press the X, then our saves, our changes won't be saved. If you press the tick, then it will be saved. And now you can see, now there's the extruded um, boss based on our sketch six here. And our planes have actually kind of disappeared basically because of what we've got. So now you'll see that this whole cube is now made for us. So we can kind of keep going and we can make different shapes. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to make another shape on this part. So what I'll do is I'll press sketch again and now I'll sketch. So now we'll select a plane to work in. So we're going to choose the actual um, top of the shape to sketch. So I've chosen this top face and now I'm going to choose a circle. So you'll see what we're doing here. Press circle, hit the middle button and now expand it. So for a circle, there's only one kind of um, dimension that matters and that's the radius. So this whole shape, uh, the square has side lengths of about 80 millimeters. So we'll make the radius to be about 20, let's choose 30 just to round it up. So you can kind of choose 30 here. Um, once again, if you want to change it like perfectly, you can just change this 29.84 to 30. And the whole thing slightly is perfectly 30 millimeters. So now that that's done, we now have a circle kind of on the top face of our cube. So we're good with that. So we'll press tick and we can exit the sketch. Okay, so we've created a perfect circle on top of our cube. Now we're going to use another feature. So before you were in the sketch tab, let's now move to the features tab. So what we're going to do with the circle is we're going to make a cut through the cube. So instead of extruding it outwards, we're going to extrude it inwards. So we'll hit the circle and now we'll hit extruded cut. So by hitting extruded cut, it creates a cylinder straight through the middle of the cube. So now what we can do is we can see that it's going to create like this hole through the middle. So if this isn't all the way, you can kind of move this inwards and outwards, depending on the length of your cut, you can move it all the way outwards. And this isn't going to create an extra cylinder. You can watch if we press the tick button, all it's going to do is it's going to create a hole straight through the middle of our cube. So now we have a hole, we have a cube. Um, so the final thing we can really do is do some like aesthetic uh, changes to our cube. So one thing we'll do is if you hit this fillet button, so the fillet, what it will do, it'll like round out the edges. So we can hit the side length here and you can see it's kind of going to give you a preview of what's going on. Um, if the radius is only 10 millimeters, we can increase this to see what the change is going to be like. So probably 20 millimeters is fine and then hit all of the side lengths. So put the side, hit this side. And finally we can hit this side here. So what fillet will do, fillet will kind of round out the edges depending on, oh, so you can show the preview of what's going to happen. So once that preview happens, you can see that this cube is going to become, the sides are going to become like the yellow uh, edges. So if you don't like how long, uh, like how curved it is, you can kind of decrease this 20 
and move it to 10 and that kind of seems a lot more reasonable um, if you want to be like more aesthetic I guess it's kind of personal preference but I'll just change this to a 5 and now we have kind of a small change so hit the tick button and now we have like a few aesthetic changes um, there is kind of like another aesthetic change you can do and that's called chamfer so hit the chamfer button and what chamfer does it's kind of hard to explain but essentially it's going to cut down through this cube so you can imagine if you have a cube and then on the top leg it's just going to make a cut straight through so the best way to show this is just to do it so you can kind of play around in SOLIDWORKS at this point this is your own cube so like this isn't going to be um, examined or anything you can kind of just move to whatever um, whatever kind of uh, flow you want so we'll move to all of these side legs here and make sure we hit all of these sides and if you've hit the top just make sure you deselect it so if you accidentally select something you can see now I don't want to chamfer the whole top so I just press it again and it will go away and now you can zoom in on the side length and we can see now that we've got all of our sides um, kind of selected so once we tick all three uh, we have to be careful so with our 10 we're going to change this to probably 3 and press OK so now as you can see um, the preview is coming up and these side lengths are kind of just going to reduce so you can change this through to a bigger length the only thing you can't do for example if you press 10 depending on how big your circle is if you try press tick it'll say rebuild errors so the great thing about SOLIDWORKS is it won't just go ahead and do your task for you it'll tell you that there's an error in your design so with chamfer um, if I push this down to 3 you'll see why there was an error so we'll go here and we'll press 3 and OK. So now with the chamfer, what it'll do is it'll take the side length and it'll make a cut straight through the edge. Now we can't make a cut all the way into the circle, otherwise like our cube is going to like disappear, the top length. Which is why there was an error if we kind of make this 10, uh, it make this 3 millimeters, 10 millimeters, um, which is why we can't do that. So make sure it's on 3, press the tick button. And lastly, you'll see that that's kind of done for this side here. Now that's the top. Um, you can redo the bottom if you want to. Personally, um, for time, I probably won't because it's the same thing. So that's our cube done. So this is our test cube. Um, it's called test. It doesn't really matter what you call it, but that's going to be our first shape. So hit save. And now, like I said, if you want to close this part, you can just close it like that. And if you kind of want to see where your shape is saved, you can kind of go to where you saved it. So I'll open up my files. I'll now go on to parts. So I did it in robotics and then into SOLIDWORKS and now parts and my test is there. So what we're going to do next is create another part. Um, essentially to create another part, go back to home and go back to part. So this time we're going to do something a, a little bit different. What we'll do is we'll create like a hex shaft or if you don't remember what a hex shaft is, it's basically like a rod. So to create a rod, once again, make sure our planes are selected. So for parts, you're going, to want to, you're going to want to make sure that all of your planes are selected so it's kind of easy to work in. So choose your planes. In reality, you only really need one plane um, because once you make your object 3D, the planes will kind of disappear. So once again, we're going to make a sketch, but this time we're going to make a cylindrical rod. So we'll choose our rod like so. And we'll now choose sketch. And now we'll sketch it in here. So once again, I chose the top plane. It's completely up to you what you want to choose. So now because we're going to make a cylindrical rod, we'll choose circle. And then once again, we'll use the middle and then expand outwards. So uh, what we'll do is we'll make this radius kind of similar to what we had it before. So I think the radius was around 30 or 20. It doesn't really matter. You can choose whatever size radius you want. And if it's around 37, we'll just make it 30. And we've got our circle here. So once again, once you create your circle, you'll see um, there will be errors if you don't click this tick. So if you keep drawing, it's going to create making circles. So you can try and do that. Um, you'll see that you'll come up errors. With SOLIDWORKS, if you do have a problem, just press Ctrl Z and it'll go back uh, to one previous step. So once I'm okay with my circle, I'll just hit the tick button. And now I've got my original circle. Now one thing I haven't done is saved my work. Hopefully this will be quick so I don't really need to save it. So what I'll do now is I'm just going to extrude my whole circle. So actually I haven't exited the sketch, so we'll exit the sketch. And now we'll see our circle is done. 
So now to extrude, go down to features and we'll select our circle. And what we'll do is we'll extrude it. So once you press extrude, uh, you can kind of see, you can also do it visually, you can kind of move it up and down. And as you move this up and down, you see how this number over here changes. Um, but I find it easier to kind of just make this number different. So 100 millimeters is about 10 centimeters, which isn't very long. For a hex shaft, um, there are different levels, but we'll make this, you know, a reasonably long hex shaft. And we'll make it about, I don't know, let's say 400 millimeters. So we now have this quite large um, shaft. Don't worry if your planes kind of disappear. Once you press the stick button, you can go ahead and now all of your planes will change to suit this little cylinder. So what we're going to do now, this is perfectly okay. Um, and this could be your end, but once again, we'll try to do some aesthetic things. So we'll click this button here. Make sure you click uh, the side length, if that makes sense. So click the side and we'll fill it this again. So go down to features, fill it. And as you can see, when you fill it kind of like a circle, it just makes it um, kind of more circular, if that makes sense. Um, so instead of filleting, so if you don't want to do like a task, press X, and now it's that didn't happen. So press the circle again. This time, let's choose chamfer. So chamfering a circle, it's a kind of like a bit more aesthetic, I guess. So it's going to create like a rounded edge to the corner. So at the moment, it's three millimeters. You can change this. I'm happy with three, so we'll press tick. So now it's kind of looking a little bit more like a hex shaft. And now we'll do the same to the other side to make it all perfect. So chamfer, and we'll use three millimeters again, and we'll press tick. And that's all good. So now this kind of looks uh, a lot nicer. Um, I'm pretty much okay with this. You can keep playing around, you can fill up things, you can chamfer things. Um, there's also like linear patterns. As you can see, if you want to try different things, um, a little pop-up will come up explaining what it'll do. So a linear pattern, it'll create like a circle, but then you can repeat that circle over a distance. So by creating one circle or one extruded cut, you can now create multiple ones throughout the whole distance. Um, same thing with ribs, shells, you can kind of choose what all of these are. Personally, um, I'm okay with this, so I'm just going to save this. And that's going to be our second part. So to save it, Control S, and we've created our test part. This time I'm going to name this something like actually appropriate. So let's just name this hex shaft. Once that's done, you'll see that it's saved. If there's no asterisks here, then you're all good to go. That's going to be uh, the end of this video. So in the next video, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using these two parts and pieces to create an assembly. So make sure you've successfully made these parts. If you have any dramas with, with this, um, just add a comment. Um, and I'll get back to you. So you'll need these parts to go into the next video. That's going to be it for this video, and I'll see you guys in the next one.